Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, thelandgeek.com. And on this week's Roundtable Podcasts, we've got all the usual suspects. And as I've been doing week in a week out now, just very, very quickly going through it. So for those of you who've been listening to us on 2x speed, slow it down now. Slow it down. We've got the Zen master, Mike Zeno. Wicked smart. Hi, Mike. We've got Tate Litchfield. I love when you call me Big Papa. Hi, Tate. We've got the technician, Eric Peterson. Hello, Eric. We've got dude buddy, the nightcap OG, Scott Bossman. And Taria putting in the reps, Harris. Hi, Taria. Last but not least, got Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmoto.com. Learn anything about anything, investorninjas.com. Scott Todd, we've got a really crazy, insane roundtable discussion today, and no one knows what we're talking about except me. This is going to be very exciting. That's right, Mark. We, we have on this call professional land investors. Everyone on here is a professional land investor, full-time land investor, and I can't wait to get their take on this. Guys, not only are you professional land investors, I do believe, I do believe that everyone on this call has a great respect for the 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 um, the the book movie Ready Player One, right? Like you guys agree with that? All right. I want you to check out this link because and for all of you that are watching, this is real land investors responding to seeing for the first time ever that I know of earth2.io guys look at earth2.io now earth2. I don't know if you know about it we're going to that'll be a great question to ask as we go around and as you go to the website you're probably looking at this going what is this thing this is the bridging of the virtual world think of like your haptic suits from ready player 1 in the future this is the virtual world meets with the real world should we be investing in Earth 2.0, or I'm sorry, Earth2.io, or is it a scam? What do you think? Take a look at it. You can buy land. This whole thing has Earth, the whole Earth mapped out. Think of like what three words? It has it all mapped out. You can go in there and you can start buying virtual land. And in the future, you're gonna be able to develop that land. You can sell that land. You can trade it. You can do all of the other stuff. And then they're working on a phase three, which would have haptic suits and the virtual reality goggles. All of this is coming. Are you now swapping the real land for Earth2.io? Who's up, Mark? All right. Well, I know that we're going to let everybody sort of digest this for a second. I, I have some, some thoughts about it, for sure. And... Um, I remember, you know, cryptocurrency. So I'm at a uh, a charity event with Frank Abagnale. If everybody does, doesn't know who Frank Abagnale is, he is the main character in Catch Me If You Can. And he was a criminal in his youth, um, one of the great, um, you know, uh, money counterfeiters of all time. And then he gets hired by the FBI, he works for the FBI for 25 years. Um, he was actually given a, he was granted a presidential pardon and he turned it down because he's like, I did it. And he's like, I don't deserve to be pardoned. So really bright guy. And so we're, we're talking to him about all these things. And this is like, you know, I want to say six years ago. And I asked him about Bitcoin and he's like, Bitcoin to me is the greatest fraud ever foisted on the American public. I heard that and I thought, no Bitcoin for me. And then guys like Eric Peterson are buying a Bitcoin very, you know, cheaply. And I'm ignoring it for years and years until finally Scott Todd introduces me to a book and I understand it for myself. I'm like, you know what? I don't see the fraud here. Maybe he does. Maybe it'll you know, turn out to be, but uh, I'm glad I caught that train when I did. And in the spirit of that, I would say Earth 2.0 could be the greatest fraud ever foisted on the American public. Or it could be the next Bitcoin 
because we're all telling ourselves stories, right? The dollar, money, is just a story we all tell ourselves. If we all wake up tomorrow and say the dollar's worthless, guess what? It's just a green piece of paper with uh, some old dead person's face on it. That's it. It's just a story. Will enough people buy this story? Let's start with you, Mike Zeno. Earth 2.0, what do you think? So I, I, I've heard a little bit about this before, actually. And um, so I have a couple of questions. Like how do, so this is, how do we know, if, I guess it's sort of like Bitcoin, that this is gonna be the virtual world, right? Because there could be multiple virtual worlds, right? So how do we know this is the one, but how do we know that Bitcoin is the one and not um, uh, Dogecoin? By Dogecoin, um, just kidding. But anyway, um, how do we know this is the one, right? And so, but then I think back, like, wasn't there a time when people were buying like McDonald's.com and Wendy's.com before people realized how big it was going to become, and then they made a ton of money on that, right? So that makes me think, man, that we could be at the at the beginning of something here. So I'm extremely intrigued. Uh, if Scott's looking into it, I think I'm going to look into it. As a disclaimer, if you're listening to this, we are not giving any financial advice and do not <laughs> buy Dogecoin based on Mike Zano's recommendation. Okay. I just do want your to own put up, put up a research. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so Mike, you bring up an interesting point. Um, Tate, what are your thoughts? It's interesting. I mean, you're definitely getting in at the ground floor right now, right? I mean, this is uh, this is just the beginning of it. But I don't know, Mark. I mean, part of me says buy real land. Well, there's enough real but land then, out there to buy. Absolutely. But then what is, I mean, absolutely. who's saying this isn't real land, right? Like who's saying, you know, we've seen a lot of new, uh, a lot of, articles in the news about nft right non-fungible tokens and things of that nature so ah, i'm gonna buy some <laughs> yeah and, and and in a way we you know yeah i mean you know in a way what we're doing as land investors is kind of you know like cutting edge in the sense that it used to be for years and years and years you know land was this illiquid asset you'd buy land you'd hold it for years and years and years, maybe 30 years before there'd be development. If you, in fact, if you go to a party and they tell people you buy and sell raw land, they're like, well, how do you sell it? I mean, who buys it? It's, it's always the first question. But we took this illiquid asset and we made it liquid. And we can sell it all day long just by doing a little bit of a creator, creative owner financing it and buying it right. So, you know, I don't know. This is the future. Uh, dude, buddy, Nightcap OG, Scott Bossman, what do you think? Uh, well, it's interesting. It's, it's fun to think about. I mean, it's basically, uh, you know, it's a big monopoly game that has the potential to become virtual reality down the road. And, uh, I don't know, why not take a little money and dabble in it? I know a lot of people who waste hundreds of dollars a month, uh, more than that on on games on the iPhone. So I don't know, take take some of your money and uh, and invest in this. But but yeah, I'm intrigued. Uh, definitely going to look into it a little bit. And you know, in Ready Player One, it all started out as a game, right? Started out as a game, and by the end, uh, people are billionaires as a result of uh, the story. So get in on the story. I don't know. It's pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, you know, for those of you teenagers. You know, Fortnite, I think, was making like a million dollars a day in digital goods. It was a free game, and they're making a million dollars a day because people wanted to upgrade their avatars. Um, Tria, putting in the reps, Harris, what are your thoughts? Um, this is my first time hearing about it or even seeing it. I, I think it's pretty cool. I agree with Bossman. I think I will probably figure out how much I'm willing to risk um, and then play around with it. And hopefully something great becomes of it. But I like getting in things on the bottom level. I, I love that. Um, this seems like it has potential to go somewhere. So I would probably invest what I was comfortable losing. I would invest. 
Right, right. But to, to Mike's point, like, how do we know, Tria, there won't be just Earth 3.io? And like, everybody's like, okay, Earth 2.0 is old news. We're all going to Earth 3.io. IO. They added Mauritius to the map with <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, some cool stuff. Uh, yeah, know. that could happen. I guess the FOMO would settle in for me and I would just want to not miss out on if this could be good. But I'd set a reasonable amount that I'm okay with and then I, I would I would play with it. But I'm a gambler, so that's kind of how I'm wired. That's right. One of my favorite jokes. Are you a gambler, Mr. Drebin? Every time I eat out. So, Eric Peterson, you're our crypto uh, expert on the round table. So many questions for you. What are you thinking? I don't know what I'm thinking. I mean, this is, this is the first I've seen it. So I guess kind of where I'm at is I need to understand it more before I can really give any kind of opinion on, on what I would do or, or wouldn't do with it. Um, I don't know if there's other similar things out there. Um, I don't fully understand how it works. It seems like there's maybe a marketplace on there. You can buy and sell these assets. Um, you know, you can go around and look at major cities and it looks like all the big buildings are bought up already. So, you know, like, I don't know, what does that mean? Did, uh, did they sell all that stuff before they made this public? Like is all the, the good, like high dollar, stuff gone and we can just buy raw vacant land around the country just like we do in the physical world i don't know i mean i have a lot of questions i i feel like it's interesting but but i don't i'm not sure what i would do with it at this point it i guess it does remind me of you know i think um in the past there's there's been things out there where you could like buy a star or you could buy a piece of the moon or whatever and like you know i mean that stuff, it's more, um, uh, I guess, novelty than, than reality. And, and I don't know enough about this, if, if it falls in that category or if it, if it falls in a different category, but that's kind of where I'm at, I guess. Yeah, it's kind of the Wild West. I mean, to my knowledge, I don't think there's any government regulation on this like there is with you know, a, a real estate transaction. But I would think with Ethereum and a smart contract, it wouldn't be difficult to eliminate double selling or any kind of fraud. But Scott Todd, what do you think? Oh, you're on mute. One of the things I think is interesting about this whole deal is a couple things. One, okay, first of all, I don't, I, to this day, I mean, I've researched this, to this day, I don't even know what, what one of these squares costs. It looks to me like one tile costs about six bucks. That's the way I look at it. I could be completely wrong, but $6 of US dollars to buy a square. And would it be fun to say I own, I don't know, Tate's house? Maybe, I mean, I can own your house and maybe, maybe you wanna buy it from me for $12 a square, I don't know. Um, I did see in the comments here that said that if you, you know, it'd be kind of cool if you bought your neighbor's house and if you don't like them, you can like destroy their house off of the, the land or the earth to, to or earth to dot IO. But there is something that's kind of cool there too. And that is, this is like a monopoly game too, in a way. I think Scott Boston mentioned this because ultimately I could buy the square and I can put ads on the square. And then I can sell that land if it becomes valuable, which I don't know how it becomes valuable in this uh, world, but if it becomes valuable and I have ads on there, well, then I still get revenue from my ads. So that's like in a later phase is what they've said. But you see, I agree with what Mike Zeno said too. How do we know that someone's not gonna come out with land 2.0? Like maybe we do, maybe we do it. And, it's a small bet, right? Like, I think I'd have to hear more traction. I think before I go spend some money and buy Tate's house, I'm going to have to get a little bit more traction, uh, hear about it more often. But I did, I did find it to be interesting that all of a sudden people are out there selling. Uh, I, I was looking at a video and someone was talking about Earth 2. And I'm like, well, what is this? Earth 2.io is, I've never heard of this land investor before. 
because they were doing weekly videos on Earth Earth 2.io. I'm like, who is this person? Oh, holy cow, they're not even talking about real Earth. They're uh, talking about a virtual world. So I don't know. I, I wouldn't spend my money yet today. But that said, I think I think it's important to keep an eye on it, see what happens. Yeah, I, I like the fact that we're cutting edge. And, and as you're talking, Scott, I actually did just buy Tate's house. And then I built on top of his house a virtual airplane where the seats don't recline. <laughs> so how fun is that? Now, how much would that be worth to Tate to buy the house back and buy the jet and then retrofit it so he could recline? Yeah, should have. Would, he, would, it, would I double my money on that? Yeah, throw it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> put a cheesecake on it. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but look, I think it'd be kind of cool if. Uh, I mean, how funny would that be? Like, let's just say that you had. I mean, I'm not trying to plant bad bad karma in the world, but let's say that you have a neighbor that's not not too friendly to you. Would it? Would it be wrong to say, like, you know, buy their square on there and maybe run an ad that says, like, a jerk lives here in real life and then, like, pay, they have to pay to take that off? I mean, it's kind of shady, I know, but it's shady in the real Still world. Still watching but is The Sopranos. Shady? Is it, yeah, I'm, I'm done with that. But is it shady in the <laughs> fake world? I'm done with The Sopranos, by the way. I loved it. I want to go back. Wait, what did you think of the ending? Were you, were you discombobulated with that black ending? Well, it just went fade to black. The funny thing is that um, I I had already seen the ending, and what oh, happened was okay. when when it actually aired, we tuned in and we tuned in for the, like the last few minutes. My wife does not remember, but I remember because I was like, okay, don't stop believing. And then I was like, okay, I don't, I'm not sure what happened here, but then as you go through it and you watch it, I do think that there's some some validity to that ending. I mean, did did he die? You know, because Lights out. That's the way it goes. But I don't know. I don't know. I, I was disappointed when it ended. I wanted more. But I am grateful that they that there's a movie coming out. Did yeah. You know the yeah. The Angels of Newark, where he gets a start. Angels of Newark? Ooh. Yeah. Uh, yeah, his son's going to be in it, right? His son serious, plays right? him. His real son plays him in the 60s growing up in uh in newark so it shows how he got how he got going that's coming out in september of this year so i can't wait for that yeah i mean look, look how how multifaceted this podcast is we're talking about digital land cryptocurrency all the way to sopranos well, I will tell you though, Mark, there there are some red flags on this thing too. Like if you if you do some some research and is Earth 2io a scam, you know, the, the, I guess that the company is in fact limiting like withdrawals. So you know, you, you got to be careful with this thing, right? Like, it, what is this? To me, it's like right now it looks like someone's just making money off of a off of a pretend world sell in the future, but you know, they're talking about the, the founder of this thing, you know, has no track record on social media or anything at all. No one really seems to know too much about this guy. Uh, you, you know, like the development team is small. That's what people are saying. Uh, th there's a bunch of red flags out there. So we're not advocating that you go out and buy something. But, you know, it is interesting, though, to see, you know, do I want to put money into the real world or do I want to put money into the virtual world? Yeah, there's a lot of be there's a lot of money to be made in the real world. I wonder but if I do, that's be, yeah. Mark, I was wondering if that because he does not on Facebook and Facebook wants to con control it, so they're they're bad mouthing him saying he doesn't even have a social profile. Because now they're well, gonna take over the Reddit. Oculus. This is where the okay. smart people are on Reddit, oh. but you know. Uh, yeah. All, all the smart smart people go to Reddit. Yeah. That's where I hang Absolutely. out. So I I know. Yeah. <laughs> Reddit, or as my son likes to say, digital heroin. Yeah, you can find anything on Reddit. <laughs> Either one. The biggest time suck of all. Oh, yeah. Um, whoops. So. I don't know, Mark. At the end of the day, I would say this. 
don't get sidetracked with this unless you have the time. Like focus on what we know works really, really well. And that's buying vacant land. I mean, yeah, go out and maybe buy one or two squares, but I'm not going to go all in on it for sure. I'm not. I'm staying focused on what I know really, really works, and that's vacant land. I just bought all of Vegas. I already looked. Like oh, half this, <laughs> half the city's that. purchased. Can you do yeah. what Scott was saying and uh, maybe buy certain areas and say, when people start looking at it, say, would you really own land? Go here. And like use it as an advertisement. Like own real land. Go here and link your website up. There's no, there's no Can ads on it today, but the ads will be coming in the future. But maybe that's a good idea, Mike. That's a really good idea. Yeah, there's there's lots of applications, but it, I, I think the world we're we're going to is going to be this intersection between the physical world and the digital world, and I do think it's you know important to keep your your eye on it. Um, you know, like Wayne Gretzky's got that great quote. I don't skate to where the puck is. I skate to where the puck's going to be. So we want to skate to where the puck's going to be. Absolutely. Um, but there's all these other applications that we can think about in real land with raw land and how it can translate into any future digital world. So it's, it's certainly interesting intellectually um, and from an entrepreneurial standpoint. Uh, it's a it's a fun topic. It's a fun topic. But Eric Peterson, at the end of the day, what do you think from a from a crypto standpoint? I don't think it's there yet, but I think it's worth keeping an eye on. Why did you buy Bitcoin so early while the rest of us didn't? Um That's a good question. I, I think that um, I just saw that when I originally purchased Bitcoin, the risk, the, the amount of money I was investing in something that was unknown was, was pretty small, but I saw some pretty strong potential in, in what they were trying to do with the technology. So you know, I, I did some research first and, you know, I made some small bets. Um, and I guess that's kind of how I got started. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, I was talking to, uh, a new land geek member and he told me that, uh, he bought Bitcoin years and years ago and ended up selling some and built his house. Mm -hmm. Not bad. Not, not, not a bad way to translate the the digital world into the physical world. Wow. Right. Oh, so, not bad. But now we're at that point in the podcast where we get to put Tria putting in the reps Harris on the spot and ask her for her tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, something actionable for the auto passive income listeners to go improve their businesses, improve their lives. But before we do that, Tria, we got to give a shout out to our sponsor, which is Flight School. Learn how the next 16 weeks can, tr can literally transform your life. Start building that passive income without any headaches, no renters, no rehabs, no renovations, no rodents. The next Flight School Q&A is going to be March 22nd. So, and that's going to be with Scott Todd, who's also your Flight School Sherpa. He's going to take you up that mountain of land investing quickly, safely, efficiently. And guess what? It ain't going to cost nothing for you. You're going to make back that tuition investment, 180 days or less, guaranteed. Just show us your work. That's it. Learn more, go to landgeek.com forward slash training and schedule a free consultation call. Landgeek.com forward slash training. All right, Taria, what do you got? Okay, so there's a book. It's a very popular book. It's um, Atomic Habits by James Clear. And so I read that book several years ago, but I also signed up for his weekly email blasts that he sends out and they are super cool so it's like three two one thursday and he gives three ideas two quotes and one question just for you to kind of consider throughout the week and so I, I go through them every week but 
last week or a couple weeks ago. Um, this one was really good. And like the three ideas he gave from this one, Rome wasn't built in a day, but they were laying bricks every hour, right? You don't have to do it all today, just lay a brick. And so a lot of his ideas and just thought processes, I'm able to apply to my land business as well, just in how I think and how I pursue it. So my tip is, if you haven't read the book, definitely read the book, um, but then sign up for his weekly tips that he gives. It's three, two, one Thursdays. That's, that's a great tip. In fact, I, I am on his mailing list and I, I love those uh, three, two, one tips. In fact, I stole his idea with the new Land Geek Digest because now we're doing TLG, Thoughts, Land, Gratitude. Mm -hmm. And um, seeing how that goes. So we're on like week two of that. Um, Scott Bossman, what do you think? That's all good. I love that book. Uh, read it a couple times, and but, I, but I'm not on the mailing list. So uh, definitely going to get on that. Yeah, no, that, that one's great. That one's great. Um, Tate, any thoughts? No, uh, it's been a while since I read the book, but uh, I'm considering signing up on his mail list. I hate I hate emails, so it better be good, Taria. If I go it's sign good. up for this, I'm coming after you. It's good. <laughs> it's good. Mike Zaner, have what's your, your... Have your VA read them to you. You'll be fine. Um, uh, that sounds better. A summary? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Summarize the email. You'll be fine. Uh, Mike Zeta, what's your favorite atomic habit right now? What are you What are you doing? Am I doing like on a daily basis? That's uh, you know, um, I got I picked up on uh, something you've been doing, Mark. I've been adding more uh, meditation, so every day being consistent with that, and I think that uh, there's some heavy hitting impact from that. So um, I think the, that's something we all I think know that is beneficial because there's been enough talk and research and enough books and discussion about it. By the end of the day, you just got to sit down <laughs> you, or the beginning of the day or any time of the day. So I found that to be um, actually very, very uh, rewarding, a very re rewarding habit and, and actually um, really helping my business. It's the whole idea of uh, we were talking, we were joking about like, like slowing down to grow quicker, you know, it's just slow yourself down. So meditation. No, yeah, absolutely. I, I came up with a, a great idea um, yesterday while I was meditating. I'm like, there's no way I would have had this amazing idea if I didn't take the time to to follow and watch my mind. Because sometimes, you know, I don't have a ridiculous thought. It's rare because actually when you do watch your mind, like I wouldn't take anything I think seriously. It's craziness. But once in a while, I'm like, hey, wait, this isn't a bad one to listen to. I don't know. I think what's great too, Mark, is that being surrounded by all of you fellow land geeks, there's, you know, I really am. I know I joke about different things, but I'm pulling little pieces out of each one of you. And because there's certain things you see that are very applicable and very powerful. And you, you know, you, you not everything fits in, into everyone's life, but you take, you know, you surround yourself by these people and you just plug in little things. Maybe it's a headset. Right. Maybe it's a daily donut. I've been, I've been experimenting. I think I'm losing weight, by the way. I'm, I'm not doing a donut, but I'm doing daily patisserie. Look at Taria's face. Daily dozen donuts. <laughs> Taria, it's, it's pure joy. It's pure joy. Next time you're out here, I'm going to get you an almond croissant, chocolate pistachio croissant, uh, pan au chocolat, mm. and sitting? the morning bun. Scott's That's one meal? No, 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 that's not. That's, I, no, no, no. I, of course not. I, I, I have one oh, okay. of these little things. Oh, okay. That's good. That's not bad. Yeah, just like Scott's donut. But it Why can't be in a bad one? mood. Not... Factor it into your macros. You're okay. And I don't feel it, it's so fresh. I don't even feel sick after it. Like you know, how you, like you feel sick after a. Well, Scott Todd knows after like a Krispy Kreme donut, you know. Right, Scott. Say what you Which, want, man. Say what you want. <laughs> I'm dedicated to it. it. The donut loves me and I love that donut. I mean, every morning I, I spring from the bed. I, I'm not even at home for that long before I'm heading out on the adventures of the day, taking on the day. Uh, the donut treats me well and I, I, I'm not missing a day. 
Is there a donut song maybe that you do every day before you eat it? Possibly. No. No. I don't need to do that. There's no there's no looking at that donut. It's just you bite into that donut and let me just say something. You bite into it and it is just pure joy in your mouth. I'm just telling you. Like it's the way it is. So you travel a to the donut. Different donut every day. Every day? You get the same what? one every day. You get a different same. donut every day or the same donut every yeah, day? Yeah, it's different because I ate the one the day before. Just kidding. Yeah, <laughs> yes. It's, <laughs> yes, it's new. Bum, bum. No, I I eat the same. Can't Sorry. Eat the same I, I couldn't resist. Day. I couldn't resist. I eat the same, uh, same donut every day. Same flavor. It is the chocolate frosted donut from Krispy Kreme chocolate frosted and i like i prefer the one with sprinkles um that's the go-to one if they don't have that one then i default to the negative sprinkles which is not necessarily as good and then if they don't have that one i'll default to the glaze but there's not too many days i have to go to the second alternative i can stay with the sprinkle one pretty good pretty good yeah what happened when you travel are you gonna have I, any I find issues? a crispy cream donut near me no mike they have the internet you can google crispy cream donuts near me and you can find one where there's a will there's a way now i did i did um i was disappointed though because back in october i traveled to michigan i did find a donut uh that was it was a crispy cream donut it was actually a 20 minute drive in the opposite direction of where i needed to go but it's okay I, I was there for a couple of days and i could make it happen but then on my last morning there i was flying out and, you know, the airport was this way and the Krispy Kreme was that way. And I'm like, I can't go that way. So I went to the Dunkin' Donut. I bit into the donut and I'm like, this is garbage. Now, if anybody here is uh, a stockholder, shareholder, owner, manager of a Dunkin' Donuts, <laughs> please don't take my, uh, it's just my own personal opinion. I'm not trying to insult anybody. But, you know, Mark, I got to tell you something. If you're not, if you're not offending anybody by noon and it's noon, I'm trying to offend somebody. Well, then, there, yeah, I there guess I'm doing my job. I don't know what to say. Is is it is it weird for you, Scott Todd, that while you're talking about a donut, Tree is drinking a healthy green juice? <laughs> Not at all, because that's up to her, and we know for a fact that she'll go 33 days without eating, and I don't go 33 minutes without eating. So. It, to each their own, Mark. To each their own. What do I say? What can I say? I'm not judging yeah. anybody. They, and if they want to judge me, that's on them. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. Eric, do you think Tree and Landon, like after this podcast, are going to look at each other and like, you know what? Nothing tastes as good as our six packs feel. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. They're, they're, they'll, they'll scoff. A donut. Jeez. Yeah. They do that. Like, I was just saying, I don't know. It works for me. I lost weight on that donut. And so you've lost weight on the donut diet. So, I weighed, I, yeah. I weighed I have 197 to say. last May when I started this thing. And I'm like, this is what I'm doing. And uh, today I weighed uh, one, 175. So, what can he say? I mean, you know, to each their own, right? It's the way it goes. I think I'm losing weight on my pastry diet. I could be on to something here. Really good. Big. I think so. Yeah. Now, I think so. I think that the real question on this podcast is for Mark, why are you drinking out of a camping canteen that, that every time you screw on the thing, it's like, jinga, 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 jinga. And then, oh, geez, it's so loud. And the podcast, when you do that, it's like even the guests are like, what is that noise? All right, I'm going to give another tip of the week because you brought that up. Okay. It's actually two. The first tip of the week is the Swell water bottle. It is double insulated. It keeps your drinks cool or hot for 48 hours straight. I will say the downside is it is not dishwasher safe, but it is phenomenal. My second tip of the week. Don't is, forget. Wait, Mark, don't forget. It's extremely loud. loud. It's extremely loud. It, it, yeah. there's a, and actually, I like that because it actually taps into the word of the day, which is misophonia, which is a complete annoyance to sounds. Like, you know, for Scott Todd has misophonia. So if you're with somebody who might make a 
sound when they're eating and you get really upset, you know you have misophonia. So Scott has misophonia, which we just discovered. My second tip, and Tate, I'm sure you're going to appreciate this because you love the spa. Tree, are you a spa goer? I love the spa. Love the spa. You know what I love about the spa? That spa water. It's infused with the cucumber and mint or the fruit. So I bought one of those on Amazon and I've got fresh citrus in my backyard and I'm putting it in this thing. I'm drinking spa water. You know how many people are in a bad mood after the spa? Right. Donuts. Ze donut. Zero. Right? <laughs> there it is. Are you fit? You got to put, are you using pebble ice in it though? Of course. That's Good. why it makes so much noise. Of course. <laughs> You know, <laughs> I feel like Scott Bossman, because he's on mute, has really not been stirring the pot. This podcast is normal. I'm not a pot stirrer. Mm. I mean, not, mm. so not this month. Not this month. I can't relate to all the spa talk and the donut talk. And I don't know. Those things just aren't part of my world currently. So I just Scott, looked at the Scott trends. Scott Bossman. Scott Bossman reminds me of an alligator. What happens is that alligator just sits there. He just sits there on the water and he just observes everything. Okay, he takes it all in and he might sit there for hours and seems like he's not moving. You wonder like, is he comatose? Is something wrong with him? Is he just frozen over because he lives in the frozen tundra? Like, and then all of a sudden you will see this, this bite and he's gone. Okay, and that's what Scott bought. Scott Bossman's a sniper in a way because what he does is he waits for the exact right moment. He he takes he takes one shot, Mark. He just one shot, and it's <laughs> deadly every single time. Just ask Mike Zano because you know he Mike Zano knows from you know the the whole imitating Scott moment that I still have as my desktop screensaver. By the way, Mike, <laughs> isn't imitation flattery? I thought that's uh what that was uh, but but, but actually know, don't I, worry mike because what what happens is i see i've i've customized that screenshot to say mike is flattering me scott bossman is the the churner nice now we finally have the full picture see. i like that you know it was interesting mark i looked at the transcript uh and every time you open the bottle it says you're gonna die that's what it says. <laughs> the noise it makes. Like I every wish. Every time you open the bottle, it... I'd have paid double for that bottle. It'd be like you're at the gym waiting to do a set of the bench. Hey, you know you're going to die? You done yet? It is, you know, I've never been happier being able to contemplate five times a day my own mortality with such uplifting quotes. So... I mean, yeah. of those quotes you have left. It's every, endless. Every, every time you open it, doesn't it deduct one off of your limited supply? Is there a death clock associated with it? They should yeah. combine, combine the death clock with the we yeah. broke app. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask. That's a great idea, boss. I'm going to actually email the developer. Yeah. That, I would love that. Absolutely. You know, it really helps you focus on the important things in life, such as this podcast. Is this worth our time? Eric Peterson's like, is it? No, of course it is. I want to thank the listeners for spending your valuable, precious time. And hopefully you're getting value from it. If you are, the three biggest favors you can do is subscribe, rate, review the podcast. Send us a screenshot of that review to support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send you the $97 wholetailing course for free. And if you really want, if you email me directly, Mark at thelandgeek.com, I will personally send you a We Croak quote that will increase your happiness and also allow you to contemplate your own mortality so you Jeez. really get the most out of your day. Because we can always make more money, but we can't get more time. Well, we know that Mike's, uh, Mark's not going to be getting any emails, so he put his email out there for nothing. <laughs> 
<laughs> hey, well, why don't you do that with your cell phone? Because no one's going to call that either if you did, if you offer that. You can, here's my cell phone, but in exchange, you don't get a call from me. You get a, we, we're we going to croak a uh, quote of the day. And you're going to be like, how come nobody's answering me? Nobody's texting me. You're going to be like Jerry Seinfeld on the, the, the um, Ben Stiller on Jerry Seinfeld when he got the phone, no one's calling him. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I don't even know how to respond to that. It's so, it's so crazy. Just, you know, you know, who's going to be getting a, a case of Dunkin' Donuts tomorrow. FedEx. Scott Todd. Into the garbage. It's, I mean, man, hopefully Dunkin' Donuts ever, doesn't ever want to sponsor this podcast because they're going to hold me against this and I'm going to get canceled. Yeah. Man. All right. Well, this is fun. Um, are we ready to do this? One, two, three. Let's Let freedom, freedom ring. ring. Man, Mark, that, you know that, what I just noticed? This was all over the place. Yeah. I just noticed that you, me, and Mike Zeno, we were exact in time because we have wired and everybody else had a delay. True story. It's not how I heard it. We, we are cutting edge ahead of them. I know we are. We're seconds ahead of them now. I can't tell you how good that feels. Yeah. See, Tate's, Tate's on a delay. He's just now hearing the Let Freedom Ring. No. Yeah. No. <laughs> I was just looking at my like iPhone. If you guys want to use that on your phone, you have to go get it. An adapter? How do you use those headphones on your it's telephone? It's not for your phone, baby. This is for this is for podcasts. Oh, so I get to have one set of headphones for my phone, another yeah. set for my computer. That's oh, that right. seems convenient. That oh, seems exactly really convenient. Because guess what? Because you're, or you're you could have one set ahead. to rule them I'm all. Seconds ahead of you, I'm seconds ahead of you. You can't even catch up. Sure. How many times have you given yourself whiplash walking away from your computer as the? Not a one. The, the, yeah. One. If you want to travel really with nice. these, do you have a like? Do you have to roll them up a certain way? I mean, I, I'm thinking I've got. They're so. Cheap. I learned a good tactic in high school when we didn't have wireless headphones, Scott. So. Uh, Tate, I'm going to tell you something. These headphones are so cheap and affordable that if I'm traveling, I can just have Amazon ship them to me everywhere mm. I'm going to go. I can have 50 of these things and still never cost the same as an iPhone. Uh, Keyword there was iPhone. cheap. Cheap. Cheap is right? good. I said affordable too. <laughs> oh, I follow the Mark Podolsky <laughs> philosophy and overpay for most things in my life. So uh, I'm going to stick, stick with what these are because they work. You're going to be overpaying for your house on Earth to Earth to <laughs> <the IO. laughs> Hey, look, and, and on that, it all, it all comes together. Mm. All right. Thanks, everybody. See ya. See ya. Bye. Thanks for listening to the Art of Passive Income podcast. Start your journey at www.thelandgeek.com and www.scotttodd.net. Rate and review the podcast and email support at thelandgeek.com. Your screenshot for a free passive income launch kit.